Yo, 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 what is up, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video. And today, I'm reacting to some of your hottest NBA takes. As I have done many times in the past, I went to Twitter and asked y'all, what are some of your hottest NBA takes? And I picked out some of my favorites to react to in this video. There were like 200, so I apologize if I don't get to yours, but there were some really good ones, including some that I even agreed with. So we'll go ahead and get to some of those in a couple seconds, but real quick, please leave a like and subscribe if you do enjoy, it helps me out a ton. And also go ahead and drop me a hot take in the comment section below and I'll go ahead and respond to as many of those as I can. Let's see if we can get hundred likes on this video and let's go ahead and check out some of your hottest takes. The first hot take that we have on this list comes from JPO0, who said that the stars will somehow align before Russ Hart and KD retire, and they will play again one more time together. And as a Thunder fan, this is something that I would personally love to see, but I just don't see it happening. I think they had a good opportunity last year when KD and Harden were playing together. Maybe somehow a Russell Westbrook trade came about if Kyrie Irving's situation kind of crumbled before it did, but it didn't end up happening, and now KD is on a four-year contract and he wants to get moved probably to a top tier contender. James Harden is kind of committed to the Sixers, so a trade's not going to happen there. I think the only chance they have of it happening is in like three, four years when they're all pretty old and maybe they just decide, let's team up one more time. But even then, I think it's just... I don't see it happening. I don't think that there is a situation where the stars will align as much as I'd like to see it. I think at this point, Russ is already starting on the decline and I don't know how long he has in the NBA. If it's like just three or four more seasons, KD will probably play a bit longer. James Harden will probably be in that middle section, but I just don't think they will all be on the exact same timeline to where it would match up. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it doesn't happen as much as I would like to see it. The second hot take comes from Manu who says that Paul George will win MVP this season. And I don't necessarily hate this take. I don't necessarily agree with it because I have other candidates ahead of him, but I wouldn't be surprised necessarily. I think the Clippers have the deepest team in the league and all of the talent necessary to go out and get the one seed in the West. And with Kawhi Leonard coming off of an ACL tear, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him sit some games, which could mean that Paul George plays a majority of their games. He looked phenomenal last season. He was an MVP candidate towards the start of the year before, you know, he went down with injuries as well as like half the Clippers roster. But if Paul George plays the way he did at the beginning of last season, Kawhi gets some rest and the Clippers do end up going for a one seed or at least a top three seed, I wouldn't be surprised if he's at least in consideration. Now, the big problem is can Paul George stay healthy? Because while I talk about Kawhi maybe sitting, I'm sure Paul George will do his fair share too because he's dealt with a lot of injuries these past few seasons. He missed most of this past year. And while he did come back at the end of the year and he looked pretty healthy when he was playing when he came back, even still, the Clippers don't really care about the regular season. I'm sure Paul George doesn't care about MVP award nearly as much as he cares about winning a championship for the Los Angeles Clippers, making their first finals appearance in franchise history, and they've got the talent to do so. So while Paul George could theoretically go out and win the MVP, I don't think it happens, although I don't hate this take. I think it is definitely possible, and I wouldn't be surprised if he gets some consideration, at least at some point during the season. This next hot take comes from Connor, who says, I think Zion is my favorite to win MVP this season. If he can stay healthy, he'll easily average around that 25 to 30 point per game mark. And I think people are going to really underrate this Pelicans team. I could see them being a four to six seed and Zion taking home MVP. I'm gonna take it a step further. Zion is easily a dark horse to win MVP, but I also think the Pelicans can be a top three seed in the West. I'm actually working on a video right now that's gonna detail why I think Zion could win MVP this upcoming season and I love this take. People forget how good Zion was. He averaged 27 points per game in his sophomore season and now with the addition of CJ McCollum as well as Jonas Valanciunas at the center, the spacing is going to be so much better than it was last time Zion played. He's got better playmakers alongside him too and while he's been out of basketball for around a year, Zion is such a dominant physical force and such a talented player that I don't think he'll miss a step. Of course, he does have to stay healthy, which is the big concern, but if Zion stays healthy and plays anything like we saw last time he played, Zion is going to be in the MVP conversation and these Pelicans could easily be a top three seed in the Western Conference. I love this take. Next up, we've got some Raptors takes from Kurt, who says that the Raptors will end up being the first seed in the Eastern Conference with Scotty Barnes running away with Defensive Player of the Year and Most Improved Player. We'll start off with the fact of the Raptors being the first seed in the East. 
I think that's a stretch. I think the Sixers, Bucks, and Celtics, to me, are clearly the best three teams in the conference. Now, each of those teams have had injury concerns here and there, but assuming all teams are fully healthy, I don't see a path for the Raptors making it there. I still think their bench is a bit weak. They rely on their starters a lot, and they will eventually break down over the course of the season. You're going to lose some games that way. I do like what they did with their offseason. I think this Raptors team is really good and jumps from like Scotty Barnes, OG Ananobi, and Gary Trent can propel them further, but I think they're still just a little bit away from being that number one seed in the East. And then Scotty Barnes running away with D-Point most improved player. Start with most improved player, second year players don't really win the award. It's kind of an unwritten rule in the NBA. It's not one that I'm a fan of. I think that if you are the most improved player, you should go ahead and win the award, regardless of what season you're in. Regardless of you're a sophomore, if you go from like four points to 18 points, you should win the award. It's just kind of the way I look at it. So I think Scotty Barnes could win most improved player, but I think that running away with it is a bit of a stretch. And also the league just typically doesn't give guys that award in their second season. And then defensive player of the year is kind of crazy. Uh, you've got Giannis Antetokounmpo, you've got Rudy Gobert, you've got Draymond Green, Bam Adebayo as well. You know, Marcus Smart just won it. Drew Holiday is a guard that now that that barrier's kind of been broken with smart winning he could get some consideration too there are just an incredible number of great defenders in this league and for a guy who scotty barnes i do think could be in that conversation one day i think it's just way too early for him there's so many great defenders and especially to say that he would run away with it is definitely a hot take next up we've got some blazers takes from smog who says that anthony simons will be an all-star the blazers will make the second round and if we're talking his hottest takes a healthy damian lillard wins mvp once again, a lot to dissect here. Starting off with Anthony Simons making the All-Star game, you know, he could have a really good year. Maybe he's in most improved player talks, but I believe that there's just too much guard talent out West for him to make it. When you've got Steph, Luca, John Morant, Donovan Mitchell, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, Damian Lillard on his own team, Shea Gilgis Alexander, De'Aaron Fox. There are so many great guards in the Western Conference. Paul George, if you consider him a guard, if he plays the two, it's just, there's a ridiculous amount of talent out there in the Western Conference for him to make it as a guard. So I just think maybe at some point he could make it in his career. In fact, I would say, I'll go ahead and say, I think he will make one at some point in his career, but for right now, it's just too far away. There's no shot. And then the Blazers making it to the second round. Once again, I think the West is just really talented. I like what the Blazers did this off season. I just don't see them being more than a play-in team. I think maybe they could be that eight, nine spot, but I don't really see them going much higher than that. Of course, a lot of that does depend on how Damian Lillard bounces back. And if he does bounce back like you think he will, and has an MVP caliber season, sure, maybe they end up making the second round. But while I think Damian Lillard is in for an All-NBA season, I think making the second round being, you know, one of the top three teams, which is typically what you have to do to win an a MVP award, I don't see them doing that. Sure, a few MVPs like Russ and Jokic have won it as the sixth seed, but that was incredible carry jobs by those two guys. This Blazers team is decently solid, so I don't think Damian Lillard will be doing any absurd carrying to get them there. And regardless, I think that there are going to be so many great MVP candidates in each conference. I just don't see it happening for Dame. It's fun to think about. It would be cool to see if Dame did win an MVP, but I think coming off of injury and the fact that this Blazers team to me is more of a playing team, I just don't see it happening. Next up on the list, we have a take from Matt who says that James Harden will be an MVP candidate this season. Now, if I gave you this take like two years ago and said in 2022, 2023, James Harden will be an MVP candidate, you would have been like, yeah, duh. But James Harden just had that kind of drop off year this past season, but I'm a big believer in the bounce back. I think that James Harden is going to come in and have an all NBA caliber season and look a lot more like the James Harden of old than the James Harden that we saw this past season. However, the big problem comes, of course, with Joel Embiid being on his team. When you've got a guy like Embiid who finished second in MVP voting these past two seasons, I think a lot of voters are going to be looking at him as one of the favorites going in and just the numbers that Joel Embiid is going to put up, especially because I expect James Harden to kind of defer a little bit more scoring wise continuously towards Joel Embiid, a guy who just won the scoring title. I don't think Harden's going to put up the stats relative to Embiid to win the award and just, you know, the presence presence of Joel Embiid being the guy that a lot of people are like, dang, he just barely missed out on it these past two seasons. I think there are going to be a lot of eyes on Joel Embiid. And if the Sixers do go off and get that one seed, regardless of how James Harden plays, I think Joel Embiid just will
will outshine him overall. He's better at this point. So while I do believe in the hard breakout or not breakout, but bounce back season, I think Joel Embiid is a much better and safer pick for the MVP award, but this is a hot takes video. So I'll give you credit for that one. This next take comes from Jose, who says that Jordan Poole will be an all-star as a six man for the Golden State Warriors. We can go back to what was it? The Damian Lillard, Anthony Simons take that we had a couple takes ago. It's really hard to make the All-Star game as a guard in the West. In a similar situation with Simons, Poole's going to be behind guys like Shea Gildas Alexander, Steph Curry, Devin Booker, Donovan Mitchell, John Morant, uh, Luka Doncic, uh, Damian Lillard, or I think I said Dame already. Regardless, Steph Curry, not sure if I mentioned him on his own team. There are a ridiculous number of guards in the West that can make the All-Star game. So for Jordan Poole to make it, he'd have to put up ridiculous numbers. And maybe the Golden State Warriors are running away with the first seed in the West, and Jordan Poole does get a little bit of a look, but we just saw a situation where Tyler Hero was balling out as the sixth man of the year for the Miami Heat, averaging around 20 points per game, and he really didn't even get much of a look to make the All-Star game. All-Stars really just don't get you know, bench consideration. Guys off the bench don't get a lot of love for the All-Star game. Only two guys off the top of my head that I can think of that made it, uh, Kevin McHale and Manu Ginobili as All-Stars off the bench. It's very rare that it happens. So for Jordan Poole to make it, he'd have to be putting up ridiculous numbers off the bench. And if he is, I would assume he just gets moved into the starting lineup. Regardless though, I just think, you know, the depth of talent in the West is just too much and six men really don't get All-Star consideration. So while I think he can or or maybe will make it at some point in his career. Once again, like Anthony Simons, it's just too early. And our final take comes from Alex, who says that the Oklahoma City Thunder will make it past the first round of the playoffs this upcoming season. And I saw a ton of Thunder love in the comments on this tweet, which I appreciate as a Thunder fan, of course, but I'm starting to realize some of y'all are more biased than I am, and I admit I am biased and very optimistic about the Thunder, but I still think this upcoming season we're about a year away from making the playoffs. Now, maybe Shea comes out and has an all-NBA caliber season, Chet comes in and immediately transforms this defense into one of the best in the league. And we see jumps from Josh Giddy, Lou Dort, Trey Mann, Poku Baisley. It's going to take a lot of things to go our way to even make the playoffs with how deep the Western Conference is. Not to mention making it past the first round. We'd likely be a playing team, so we'd have to upset one of the top two teams in the conference to make it past the first round. And that's just not going to happen. This team is still at least a year away, in my opinion, from making the playoffs. I think next year, we've got a decent shot considering all of the development that guys are going to go through and if we get one of the top picks in this upcoming draft adding another young cornerstone to this team I think could ultimately make the Thunder a playoff contender for next season but I still think we're a year away and I still think that to make it out of the second round it would be one of the most shocking things that the Thunder have done in a very very long time we had that team with Chris Paul Shea Gallo uh, Steven Adams Darius Basie like that starting lineup team Lou Dort went off in that series against Houston Houston, and we still didn't make it out of the first round. It is really hard to make it out of the first round in the Western Conference, in the NBA in general. So with a team that is much worse than that one, I just don't see it happening. Maybe if, like I said, a bunch of guys take leaps, who knows, maybe we make the playoffs, but to say we make it past this first round is kind of, you know, beyond hot take to one of the hottest takes that I've seen. And those are y'all's hot takes. Let me know, like I said, a hot take that you have for this upcoming season in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what y'all have to say. Please leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy it helps me out a ton and only takes a few seconds. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this or just any other video ideas that you have. We're in a bit of a lull in the off season, so I'm trying to come up with video ideas as much as I can, but suggestions are always appreciated. I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Real one, say it back.